Okay, Paul Hamby here, and we're here at uh, in Juneau, Alaska, and we're going to talk about dwarf mistletoe, a parasitic plant that's potentially a problem in the trees here. Uh, also, in the background, we're going to look at some problem trees that are weakened by small root systems due to their competition when they were growing, and now they're relatively unstable because of one area next to it has been exposed. But we'll talk about dwarf mistletoe, the kind of little-known parasitic plant that occurs here. It occurs in western hemlock. Uh, it also occurs in spruce, although you don't see that very often, and some other uh, conifer trees. But primarily here in southeast, it's in the western hemlock. So uh, it's in the kingdom is the plant A, of course, uh, as opposed to animal A. Yeah, classification, Magno, Magnoliopsida, okay, you can tell I say that a lot. Now the uh, order is Santa Lucia, thought that was kind of interesting. And the genus specifically of this parasitic plant, which is uh, Archaeothobium, Archaeothobium. So Santa Lucia Archaeothobium, which is a long way of saying dwarf mistletoe. It's one of about 46 parasitic plants that occurs in conifer forests. That would be worldwide. It's host, hostorium. Hostorium is kind of like roots that come out of it. It's a fruiting body only comes out a little bit. Hostorium is like roots. It comes out. It doesn't penetrate cell walls, but it goes into the plant, into the xylem tissue, into the phloem tissue. Essentially sucks the life out of the tree. It makes them rot out from the center. It puts rotten spots in different places in the tree, as well as causing mutation. And we're going to take a look at some of that mutation. It's called witch's broom. It's kind of a thick gnarly limbs, which is indicative of hemlocks that have this terrible disease. These trees are also predisposed to falling down prematurely. So let's go take a look right now. Recording. All right. Here's a, a mistletoe, excuse me, here's a hemlock that's been, let's say, mistletoed. It's had the life sucked out of it. It's a, what's called a snag. It's a dead tree. Next to it is another mistletoe. And if we go up and look up in that tree, you're going to see limbs that have what's called witch's broom. It's a mutation where it has those big, gnarly limbs that are real fat. If this didn't have a parasitic plant causing mutation, that would not be occurring. That is not a normal thing. It is, o it is only normal in a diseased forest full of these parasitic killers. Okay, now these trees want to fall down. They want to rot, decompose. They're having the life sucked out of them. Mistletoe is a hemiparasite, meaning it, suck, it gets a lot of its chlorophyll and its nutrients out of the, the host plant. And uh, it does get a little bit of chlorophyll on its own when its fruiting body comes out of the uh, little tiny sprigs will come out, male or female. And uh, when it, then when it uh, comes out in that kind of area up there in that tree where those big gnarly things are there, those big uh, witch's broom type branches, a seed husk will be hydraulically pressurized with the sap flowing in the spring when it starts getting warm and will actually, when it blows open, will, can actually travel laterally up to 40 feet through the forest. Not as a line drive, but with some elevation with a trajectory. But this makes it able to really move through a forest at the rate of approximately one foot a year. So if you have a forest that's infected, with, for, and it's here, been here 100 years, and it hasn't had a chance to grow healthy, this thing is easily completely infected in here. 
Now, I would say with these things looming over dwellings like this, it would be a good reason to, uh, you know, to mitigate this hazard by removal. And these trees are have competed to grow. They're way too tall for their root base size out here. And if you look through, very thin, very spindly. And in nature, what would happen is eventually a, group, a stand of trees like this will all fall down. One will fall into another one, and then they'll all just do, create a big blowdown patch. Here, where you know. The residential is right up next to the green belt area. You can't really afford to have that kind of activity of trees falling like that. So there's no reason not to have trees, but they should not be looming over where they could harm, make babies cry, essentially damage also the building and the structure. It's just not a good thing. This uh, is a real hazard right here. And that's been dead for quite a while. You can tell because there's no small, significant, small growth left and it's rotted off and the bark's falling away. In fact, that's right up there with being almost too dangerous to even climb. So we'll figure that out. But these other ones, these should be mitigated. Get this, you know, this mistletoe infected stuff out of here and get something in here that's healthier uh, like re shorter replacement trees, uh, native, like, you know, yellow cedar, maybe some spruce. Then you've got some trees that are going to withstand wind and some weather, but not these spindly dog hairs. These guys are going to blow down, and, and it's going to very likely hit this house, you know, this building right here. So that's, in a nutshell, we kind of drifted off of, mistletoe, dwarf mistletoe alone, but you know, the significance here in this forest is it's kind of an overripe second growth forest that never was really managed at any point. It's just, it was just left to, to go, you know, wild, and this is what has ended up. So we should be at least clearing back a tree length, if not more, um, but anything that can strike the house should probably be removed. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, this presentation where we you know, kind of learned together about dwarf mistletoe in southeast Alaska. This is Paul Hamby, the outdoor expert, signing off. And this is Trevor Richards, expert cameraman. Thank you, Trevor, for your excellent uh, videography. My pleasure.